Hey everyone, it's Susan Pierce Thompson and welcome to the weekly vlog. Okay, a couple days ago I was on the phone in the morning on the accountability call, which is this call that we do every morning, 365 days a year with our bright lifers. Um, and we just hop on the phone, we uh, go through our accountability roll call, which just means like, did we eat what we committed to eat yesterday? Do we have our food written down for debt for today? Have we meditated? Have we talked on the phone with anyone in the Bright Line Eating community? Like just a bunch of questions like that. What are we grateful for? And then um, I do coaching with someone in the community or often multiple someones if we get through several. And this woman, um, Jerry Bell Seems McDowell, got on the line and her question was so good that I asked her if I could share it in a vlog and I asked her if I could use her name and she said yes and yes. So here's what she said. She said, Susan, I went out last night to a bar to listen to music and the people I was with were having dinner and eating and drinking, but it was late and I ate my dinner beforehand, before we went. Uh, and then I was just drinking my Brightline approved beverages. Uh, but they were drinking, you know, alcohol and eating a bunch of bar snack foods. And she said, normally that wouldn't trigger me, but for whatever reason this night, it really was hard to not eat those foods. It, they just looked good. And, you know, I think we can all relate to the salty, crunchy, you know, yummy, whatever. Like, yeah, sometimes it looks better than others. And she said that she used her tools, she, um, you know, dug deep and then as the night wore on, dug deeper and didn't eat any of that food. But she got home feeling incredibly depleted. And she's wondering what she did to her willpower through that experience. And she was like, Susan, I don't know what to think of that. Did I just weaken my willpower because I came home and I felt spent, right? Um, no willpower left in the tank. Or did I strengthen my willpower because I didn't eat? I didn't eat that food, right? And on some level, you got to think that's a triumph, right? Like, so did I strengthen my willpower? Did I weaken my willpower? What just happened in my brain? What did I just do? Okay. So, and, you know, there's nuance here, and it's nuance that I think goes beyond anything that I've ever explained, either in my book or in these vlogs. So I thought, that is an awesome question. Let me address this in the vlog. So what I told her is I said, Jerry, it's both. You both weakened and strengthened your willpower. So in the short term, yes, you weakened it. So certainly that night, you came home spent absolutely vulnerable to eating off your food plan. But what I've experienced um, is that the anterior cingulate cortex, this part of the brain, it's about like two inches behind here, just sitting right behind the prefrontal cortex. Um, it does not always replenish after a good night's sleep. As a matter of fact, depending on the degree of depletion, um, you could binge first thing the next morning, like wake up and just think, oh, and you know, or the next time you're in, in an environment where they have those particular kinds of foods, there's triggering that can be food specific. So uh, the next time you're in a bar-like environment or an environment where they've got that particular kind of crunchy, salty stuff, um, the sort of depletion of like, oh, I wanted that and I didn't get it back then, so I'm gonna have it now. That can kind of kick in, it can kick forward into the future. Um, depending on how far down the track of fantasy and imagination you went with the food, like, oh, if I had it, it would taste like this and whatever. I mean, you were in an environment that provided the cueing to sort of think in those terms. It could make you vulnerable even weeks or months later. Um, if you were more vigilant with your thinking, and brush those, it just kicked those thoughts out of your head the second they came in. That's not my food, that's poison to me. That's not my food, that's poison to me. And never developed um, the sort of brain triggering of imagination of, oh, it would taste like this, and oh, I would just reach out. Like If you never went down that far down the path, then you wouldn't have made yourself vulnerable a week or a month from now. Like getting home, you would have been good to go on with the show. Um, there's also just a difference in terms of depth of depletion. So if you got home, um, 
so spent that you were almost practically shaking, if not physically, then at least sort of emotionally from like, I cannot believe I made it. That took every last ounce of reserves that I possess as a human being. Um, that level of depletion can make you vulnerable um, it, in absolutely just the brain kind of sense, the anterior cingulate cortex not being able to show up for you the next day and the day after that. In much the same way as like traveling or Thanksgiving or, you know, some kind of social occasion or whatever, we talk about re-entry, like give yourself some cushion after the event and recognize that you're as vulnerable to eat off your plan the day after Thanksgiving and the day after that as you are on Thanksgiving Day. Um, we talk about that a lot in Bright Line Eating. And um, that would be in play here too. This notion of, you know, you're going to need to, and you know, the cool news is that you know it's coming, right? Whether it's Thanksgiving or like your awareness of getting home from that bar and thinking, oh my gosh, that was so intense. What I would do in that situation is literally look at my calendar and think like, how can I get more support, more rest, and sort of consider the next day like a re-entry day? Um, is there anything on my calendar I can cancel? Um, or at least make a few phone calls, like you being on the accountability call, Jerry, the next morning, raising your hand and saying, Susan, help me shed some light on this or get some perspective on this. That was brilliant. That was you getting the support that you needed. So um, that is absolutely the way to handle it for sure. Um, and, you know, because you know it's coming or you are you are aware of it, you know that you're vulnerable afterwards, you can get yourself more support. So that's like the depths. If you're super, super depleted, then yeah, you're going to be vulnerable the next day. If you got through, but um, it didn't tap you to your core, maybe you by the time you were home, you already had rebounded and felt fine. Like, you know, maybe a spring in your step, like, look at me, I didn't eat. That was kind of challenging. And so if the depletion was more, not as severe, up here more, um, then you might have actually not sustained any willpower depletion the next day or even later that night, okay? So it's a matter of degree. In either case, you strengthened your willpower long-term. And what I mean by that is more that you built the automaticity that will take the load off willpower. So I don't actually mean that you strengthen your willpower muscle like in the anterior cingulate cortex. What I mean is that you contributed hugely to the transfer of this type of situation, the regulation of this type of situation into the basal ganglia where automatic behavior sequences are executed without a thought, where you honestly you wouldn't even notice those snacks on the table. Just like if um, there's crayons and, uh, and coloring paper on the table because you're eating with kids, like you don't know, like it's on the table, but that doesn't mean that it's a thing for you. It doesn't mean that it's drawing your attention constantly or sapping your willpower. Like you can literally reach a point with NMF, not my food, not my drink. You can reach a point where you so don't eat that stuff that you don't even, you hardly even notice it. You know what I mean? Just in the same way. It's, yes, it's an object on the table, but it's, it's not something that um, filters into your consciousness in any way that takes, that makes you take notice of it. You contributed to the development of that kind of brain. Uh, because you helped break a cue response behavior pattern of, you know, in that kind of environment, normally we would be bending our elbow all night long and you didn't at all. And the effort that you put in helps to create a world in which you're just a person who doesn't eat that stuff. You don't eat in that kind of context. You just don't. Um... And it's not hard. You're not trying not to eat. You don't even think to eat because it's not your food. It's You just don't eat in that kind of context. So um, the breaking of the cue response behavior pattern, which is really like a workaround in terms of brain terms, it's a fiber, it's building a fiber tract that completely circumvents the neural energy from that old eating habit in that kind of context into a new channel. Like, um, yeah, all the other stuff that you were doing, listening to the music, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So 
you both uh, depleted your willpower in the moment, but you also strengthened your willpower by building the fiber tracks that are going to create automaticity. So your willpower is not even tapped in the future at all. Yeah, so good for you. Super proud of you. Well done making it through. And thank you for sending in this question to help us understand the nuance of the two different types of ways that uh, willpower is both weakened and strengthened when we're in a tough situation. Um, thanks, Jerry. Love your question. And that's the weekly vlog. And I'll see you next week.